Let's discuss the SIS model homework. This is a model with disease dynamics, except that there is no recovered reason, region. People can become sick and go from in susceptible into infected. The disease does not grant immunity. So infected people go back to being susceptible after recovery. The population is constant. S plus I equals N. And in the homework, one of the things I ask you, I think the first thing I ask you is to find, sorry, this is the second thing, but we'll do it now, to find I of S. And I, I give a hint that this should be easier than it was with the SIR model. If S plus I equals N, then I equals N minus S. Now for the fixed points. A fixed point occurs when both these derivatives are zero. In this first expression, we see an I and an I. Again, in the second expression, I'm going to set these equal to zero. And at the same time that I do that, I'm going to pull an I out of both of the expressions. And doing that, the first thing I observe is that if I were zero, if there were no infected people, both of these equalities would hold. So this gives us some fixed points. Fixed points occur when I equals zero, which is intuitive. If there are no infected people, a disease doesn't break out and everyone remains not infected. But suppose the disease has broken out. Suppose that I is not equal to zero. Then for both of these equalities to be true, Negative AS plus gamma equals zero. And AS minus gamma equals zero. And if you solve that first equality, take gamma to the right. negative AS equals negative gamma, divide both sides by negative A. S equals gamma over A. 
And if you solve the second equality, AS equals gamma, S equals gamma over A. So this equality also makes both these equalities true. So we have a horizontal and a vertical line of fixed points. So here are I and S with our lines of fixed points drawn in. And remember, here's the relationship between I and S. These are trajectories on these curves, are straight diagonal lines with slopes of negative one. With the SIR model, S could only decrease, and you ha you'd have to follow these lines to the left. That's not the case anymore, though. People can go from being infected to being susceptible. So there's no reason that S should always be decreasing. To determine when S is decreasing and when S is increasing, as time passes, I mean, we look at its derivative. If S is increasing as time passes, this is positive. If S is decreasing as time passes, this is negative. So S is decreasing when negative ASI plus gamma I is less than zero. I is always positive if we divide both sides of this equality by I. It does not change the direction of the inequality. And we find that S is decreasing when S is larger than gamma over A. So if we start on this trajectory, for example, as time passes, S decreases. And because we're stuck on this line, S decreasing means that S is going up this line. Conversely, when is the number of susceptible people increasing? Well, this time, you want to know when it's increasing with time, so you make the time derivative positive, and you get the reverse of this. You find that it's increasing when S is less 
than gamma over A. So if S starts to the left of this line, if S starts here, for example, then as time passes, S increases. We move from the left to the right. And because we're stuck on this line, when we go left to right, we're doing it like this, going down the line. So here's a trajectory. And what happens if our initial condition is on the trajectory? Well, if it starts on the trajectory here, it converges to a fixed point on this line of fixed points. If we start on this trajectory down here, we converge to this fixed point on this line of fixed points. What is this point? It's gamma over A comma. Remember that I plus S equals N. So if S is this, I has to be this. So as time passes, in general, we'll converge to a fixed point. And notice that the number of susceptible people and the number of infected people are both positive here. So what we expect as time passes is that we'll settle into a fixed point where some people are always sick. The disease will persist in the population. The only exception is that if we start below this line, then when we follow the trajectories, we hit a fixed point on the s-axis. And when that happens, the disease is eliminated. So the disease persists unless we happen to be on one of the lines down here. And we could quantify that further. I mean, we could find the equation of this line, but just speaking in general, the disease gets wiped out only if the number of people in the population is very small. Like if you look at a point here, this initial condition results in the disease being eliminated. And you see the number of susceptible people and the number of infected people are both quite small here. So the total population is quite small. 